Welcome to Tool Tuesday. Today we are going to talk about gouges. This is a really important tool for winemakers and because I am this week making a violin scroll, I will explain a little bit about the different gouges I use for a violin scroll. Okay, so what is a gouge? Well, uh, it's basically a chisel that is rounded and it's rounded in different shapes and today on the bench here I've put out uh, a small selection of the gouges I use. Um, often it's the fact that you buy a lot of these and you end up using maybe half of them because you have your favorites. So this is what I'm going to show you today. Okay, so the difficulty with cutting the scroll for a violin is that it's very small, it's very neat. Um, and there's a lot of curves going on. Uh, just looking at the scroll from the side, you have the spiral going this way. Then looking from the front, um, you have the, the, um, the ears of the scroll coming out. So that's, uh, well, what we in Cremona call the Los Viluppo. So it's uh, the kind of development of the, of the movement. Um, and you can do most of the work with a violin scroll with gouges if you have skill. And at the end of the video, I will also give you a small pro tip when it comes to gouges and cutting a scroll. So let's get started. To show you the different sizes of the gouges we have, I will um, made this small design. So you can see here we have like the, the flattest one which is a uh, number two. So that's uh, this gouge here. It's very, it's almost flat, but it has a very slight and small curve. And that's great for, um, for example, for these areas here, when I work here in this way, the number two is really, really nice. And then the next one is um, slightly more curved, which is number three. And you can see the difference here if I show you. This is a number two and number three. So if I hold it like this, you can see these are slightly different. And of course, when you buy gouges, you have to find um, uh, one that suits you well and which is uh, relatively easy to sharpen, uh, but still holds the edge for quite a long time. And uh, in addition to the curve, of course, they come in different uh, width. So you can have a, a number two, let's say, um, you can have it like 10 millimeters thick or like 25, like this is, or 20, and even wider, like 25 or 30. So it all, it comes down to what kind of operation you have to do um, and um, which gouge will be suited for that kind of work. So moving on uh, to the number five. So here again on the design, it's, uh, it's something in between the really curved ones and the almost flatter ones. So the number five is, that's maybe one of my favorites. This is a number five and it's 20 millimeters uh, wide. And it's, uh, it has a nice curve without being too tight. So this one uh, works good in, yeah, uh, when it gets more up into this, uh, this part of the scroll, it's great. Um, but for, for violin scroll, it's really not suited for this kind of curve because it's too flat. So, but if I were making a cello scroll, I could use it in that position, okay? So um, then we have number uh, seven, which is this one. And the number seven is almost very useful when it comes to violin scrolls, because uh, it's the one you use mostly into the curves uh, of the spiral. So starting from here, I could use uh, this one, for example, a seven, uh, 20 millimeters wide. And this one goes quite well here in the beginning. And the trick here is really to find um, a gouge that suits the curve of the, of the scroll. So where you are working. If I use it here, as you can see, it's uh, actually 
too curved. Uh, but if I move slightly upwards here, it's, it's really working already better, okay? So the trick is really to find a gouge that suits the curve you are um, going, to, going to do, okay? And it applies to, of course, making a violin scroll, but also other parts of the, of the instrument. And then for the, the final touch here, what we call the eye, which is really um, the last part of, of uh, the scroll here, the, the, um, the spiral form. Um, and there I use uh, two different ones, uh, a number eight. So that's this one here. It's really curved and you cannot really use it in many other places. Um, but once you get in there, I will, I will maybe show you in, in a later video, you can really cut into that spiral quite nicely uh, at the very end. So to finish it off, I have this one, which is uh, also a number eight, but I, I modified it a little bit. So I, I grinded the sides a bit like in this direction. And I also took away um, material on, on the back side. So then it's, it's actually thinner than it was from the manufacturer. And then it's really nice to go in, in, the, in the last part here and really go down, deep down and cut clean, nice cuts because it's so small and it really goes into those small tight spaces. Okay, so that's, uh, that's it when it comes to gouges. Um, if you want to do something fancy, you can always make your own handles like I did. Um, this is actually olive wood from um, Sardinia, uh, Italian island. I went there for holiday many years ago and I, uh, yeah, we drove past um, olive field and I, I asked the farmer there if I could have a small piece of an old olive tree that was laying around. Um, too old to make olives anymore. And uh, that's what I've been using ever since to make my handles. It's a lovely wood, it's quite hard to work with, but the feel of it with some a little bit of, uh, of uh, wax, it's really nice. Then if you want to give it a go and make uh, like a really big beast, this is great, this is my favorite when it comes to roughing out the archings. This one you can really push with your hand or you can even support your body and really um, get going. So this is a, this makes wood chips fly. So the, the last uh, pro tip of the day, when you work with um, hardwood like maple, the trick is really to use some moisture, okay? And even though it, this is dry wood, it's been stored for many years, there's no harm in just, you know, I, I just use this one here, a small brush, and, and just put some hair on, especially on the end grain. It's, it's a great way to cut hard wood and make, uh, make it a bit more easy to work with. So then when you have the, the surface hair um, wet, it's um, slightly easier to, to cut, okay, and make a nice cut. In addition to, of course, having sharp gouges. Okay, that's all for today. Thanks for joining, and uh, we'll see you for Tool Tuesday next week. Bye.